Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, 9 Motor Gang here, and today we're going to be going ahead and ranking the different Vex Hero Bots. So, every year Vex com goes and comes out with a basic robot design that's basically just designed to be able to play the basics of the game, or at least part of the game. And they publish, like, build instructions, so teams that have the competition starter kit can use these as, like, a general starting point in order to build off of. And these robots aren't very competitive, so I'm just going to be ranking them on how well they play their game based on a couple of different factors. The first factor I'm kind of going to be considering is like, how well does this robot do on its own for playing the game? Like, if this robot's just trying to play the game, get a good score throughout the match, how well does it do? Next thing I'm going to be ranking it on considering is like, how does this compare to like, what a team might build if they don't use a hero bot? Like, just from a team's own starting point, how far are they going to be able to get on building a robot that's competitive? Because some games are harder to score on, some games are easier to score on. Games that it's easier to score on, teams might just be able to build their own robot and be perfectly fine. Then kind of the other thing I'm going to consider is how well does this robot do if like you're going to modify it like as a starting point as a base how good is this robot for improvements in order to make a better robot like all of these use the starter kit so they're just like four motor four motors in total which means two motor drives so like if you're going to improve these add more motors how well can it do from there and then finally the thing I'm going to consider last is like if I have a good scoring meta robot or whatever and I'm partnered with one of these hero bots how happy am I going to be partnered with these hero bots because like is this going to be a robot that can still like help and contribute to the alliance or am I just going to end up having to hard carry them or just lose if the other alliance is better? So with the basics out of the way, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and let's get into it. So the first robot I have this in last place is Axel. This is the high stakes hero robot. This is I think the only hero bot that really is a failure and doesn't work. Um, teams weren't able to really build this and score it. I saw a couple teams try and build this throughout the season, but I never really saw any team that had a functional version of this that was going around and scoring points throughout the match. And I think this is part of the reason that High Stakes had so many 3-3 ties, uh, because this robot just didn't really work at playing the game. Like, it couldn't really pick up the rings, and then it was supposed to be like a plunger thing, you stick the ring on there, push it into the ground, and then, like, put it on top of the goal. But, like, it didn't really work, so I would say this is definitely the worst hero bot High stakes was a harder game to build for, but this thing just doesn't really work. It's a terrible starting point. Um, I guess it can contribute to the alliance, but like a push bot can sit in the positive corner and camp and protect it. So not really anything super positive about this robot design. Moving on to the number seven spot, we have Striker. This is the over under hero bot. And this one honestly on its own isn't too bad. Basically it had like this thing would basically flip out. You can kind of see on these gears here. And then it would have like these flaps in order to pick up the tri balls. And then for over under, you're trying to push the tri balls onto your side of the field and then eventually into your goal. And this wasn't like a terrible robot. The reason that it's so low is over under was such an easy game to build for. You could have like a push bot with a funnel on the end that could then go ahead and just push blocks into the goal. Or even then, you could just have an intake. You didn't need it to have this whole flip out system thing, which just adds extra complexity. You would be better off just like building a push bot with even just a static mounted intake is going to be significantly better. So for that reason, I'm putting this down lower. Additionally, if like you're alliance with this, yeah, it's fine. But again, you would be just as good with like a push bot basically at this point in time. It doesn't really have any extra benefits over that. And as a starting point, it's also not very great just because it has so many extra moving parts that you just didn't need for this game. You don't need a motorized thing to like spin the intake out. That just wasn't needed for this year. It was too simple of a game. Next, moving on, we have Flip. This is the turning point hero robot. And now we're starting to move into the territory where this is probably still like a net positive than just like having a push bot as your drive base. You're actually like getting stuff here. This thing could kind of flip over the caps. It wasn't really great. And it could also push into these low flags right here. It could not shoot balls and get those top flags, which is one of its main disadvantages. And it really struggled to park based on what I remember. It was a few years ago, so. So I might be forgetting some things, but I don't recall it being able to park very well. And since this is like a very intense pushing game, a two motor drive just isn't going to cut it at all when you're trying to park at the end of the game. Additionally, not really a great improvement. Nobody had these big complex chain bar cap flippers by the end of the season. This just wasn't really a good design to go with. But, you know, it wouldn't be the worst robot to be partnered with because it can still at least do something with the caps. Um, and then maybe you could focus on, if you're a metabot, you could focus on getting the top flags here while you have your alliance partner, maybe try and get the caps, which are worth less points, but still valuable. Next, moving on, we have Disco. This is the spin-up hero robot, and this thing is just way too complex for what it could actually accomplish. It was kind of like a starting point, like it could pick up discs off the ground and intake them up, but it couldn't actually get them into the goals. So you might as well just have, like, 
a funnel or a plow or something, push the discs into the logo because there's really no point in taking the disc, driving over the logo, out taking the disc. Really the main advantage that it had is it had this roller right here, um, 2.75 inch wheels, which you would go push into these rollers and spin them so that your color was facing up for an extra 10 points at the end of the match. Um, but basically, a lot of middle school teams, basically what they would just do is just have a drive base and then just a stick. You didn't need all of this extra structure, which just kind of weighs it down and uses up an extra motor. So I don't think it's really worth it in that regard. One of its main struggles, but this is at least a decent starting point if you wanted to add a flywheel or something to maybe start scoring up in those top goals right there, which was where the main bulk of the points were. Finally, the other thing about Spin Up was the end game expansion, and this robot sucked at that. Um, all it could do was park with four wheels on four different tiles and cover a maximum of four tiles. It really couldn't do that at all, and that's another area where like lower level teams, middle school, uh, was mostly rollers, but then they could actually get a lot of points from expansion by like dropping a string and then driving all the way across the field, and this robot didn't really have anything like that, which was one of its weaker issues. And again, if you're partnered with this thing, you can't really get this robot to do anything because it's only got two motor drive. You could maybe have it park on the opposite side of the field as you. That way, if you're shooting string down here, um, you might miss those tiles over there. And maybe they could contest one roller if the opponents aren't very good. But there's nothing you can really do with this robot if you're aligned with it at a high level. Moving on to change up, we have Crunch. This robot will get one of the golf balls. It would intake it right here. It would raise up the lift. And then it would score it in the top of the goal. And for scoring, it was slow, but it actually wasn't the worst thing ever, it could at least um, play the game in that regard. One of its major issues is that it could not de-score was the main thing, because changeup was a cycling game, so you wanted to have your color ball on top of the goal, and then once the, once the goals had three balls in them, take the ball out of the bottom and put your own color ball on top. But these robots couldn't actually de-score, so they were entirely dependent on their alliance partners, um, because if you were up against these, you could just get fill the goals and make sure that your color was on top and there was absolutely nothing these robots could do about it. So that's kind of their main disadvantage, but it's fairly easy from an expansion point to add like a stick or something that could de-score. And they could at least score, which um, is better than some of the hero bots on the list. And again, if you're partnered with them, you could maybe handle more of the de-scoring or go with a strategy where you're not filling up the goals and you're just trying to get one ball on top in order to get like the tic-tac-toe bonuses or whatever they were called. So in that regard, it wasn't the worst robot ever. Moving up into the top three, we now have Lift, which is basically a modified clawbot for tower takeover. And this robot is now moving into the territory where this can actually play the game in pretty much all of its aspects. So that's kind of one of the benefits of these robots here. It obviously couldn't stack as tall or get to all of the top towers, but it could at least make stacks in the corners. Um, if I recall, it was maybe around four blocks tall is what this thing could um, stack. And then it could also put cubes in some of the shorter towers on the field here. So this is a robot that could play the game. It's obviously not going to be able to hold its own against a tray bot that's putting like 12 stacks up. But if you're just at a lower level of play, you can put up four block stacks. Um, and it wasn't the worst robot ever. So for that reason, I'm going to put it up here. And we're actually at the point where you can kind of play the game now. Starting point, probably not the best because you're probably going to be wanting to be with a tray bot for tower takeover. However, if you're partnered with this... Um, even if, if your robot isn't the best, you could still at least have them play like towers and try and get your color run to help match you and support your alliance partner there. Or maybe you do two stacks in one corner and you just kind of let them put one four stack up or maybe five stack in one of the other corners. That way they could still contribute points to the alliance that way. And honestly, this robot isn't much worse than what a lot of starter teams had because they were basically just building claw bots anyways. And this is just a modified claw bot with a slightly higher center of gravity. Next, moving on, we have Dex. This is this year's pushbacks game. And this robot, honestly, it's pretty solid. I mean, it can drive around. It can score blocks and all the goals. It's not fast at scoring, but it can at least score. So it's pretty solid in that regard. Also not a bad starting point for a robot, just a linear back. That's a lot, what a lot of teams are running even at a higher level. It's just mainly slow, but it can at least do most of the tasks of the game, which makes it a lot better than most of the robots here. So for that reason, I'm putting it in the top two. Again, if you're alliced with it, you're probably going to be doing most of the scoring anyways, but it can maybe do like a push for one of the center controls at the end, or at least sit at the end of one of the goals and stop another team from pushing blocks out. Although it doesn't have a D-score stick, which is kind of a disadvantage, but honestly, that's not going to be too hard to add. In fact, I saw a team um, just like a couple weekends ago that had on the end of their um, like shaft on the top roller, they had like a shaft collar with a standoff sticking out. So they would just like spin it around until the standoff was going down and then they could drive into the goal. And it was actually kind of cool seeing them come up with that solution to that. But again, honestly, pretty solid robot as a starting point. It can score decently well, doesn't really have any major issues. Finally, as an honorable mention, 
the build instructions site that Vex has does list Super Flip as an option. Um, this would obviously destroy the competition compared to all of these other robots here because this one uses the competition super kit, not the starter kit. So this one uses seven motors and has a four motor drive. Um, it has like a flywheel for shooting and it's got all the flipping capacity and it's going to be doing better at parking. But it seems after Turning Point, I feel like they had something for Tower Takeover like this too, but I couldn't find any uh, reference to it on the Vex site anymore. But if you're using seven motors instead of just four, you're obviously going to be doing a lot better here. And then in the first place spot, we have Moby, which was the Tipping Point hero bot. This thing was honestly pretty good for the game. Tipping Point, especially early on in the season, obviously with all of these games, if you're playing at a high level, the hero bot's not going to do well. But for even mid-level matches, this could do quite well. You wanted to push the goals onto your side of the field and then park at the end. And this robot was capable of like grabbing a goal and going up and parking, which was a lot of points. And if you had a good robot that could support this, it would work really well. Because usually, again, at higher level things were different, but usually just one robot would park. So if you just had this robot park with one goal, then you could have your alliance partner put up some other goals on the platform after you'd already parked. So honestly, it worked pretty well as a hero robot, and it's also easy to modify. Like I know a team in Kansas just slapped some extra drive motors on this thing and had like basically a six motor drive with a conveyor belt and it was actually a decent robot um, as long as you had a lot. Like if you were a good alliance partner, basically they could do anything but rings and it wasn't hard to add an extra thing at the back to get two goal capacity. So again, pretty solid robot here and I think this is probably one of the best ones here. That kind of wraps it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.